On this week's Cardiology Countdown, we have resistant hypertension, aortic aneurysms and how to fix them, and after 10 years, a new guideline for management of stable ischemic heart disease. So to begin with, we have a paper from Dharam Karabani and uh, Deepak Bhatt of Cardiosource that have looked at the REACH registry at the prevalence and outcome of patients with resistant hypertension. This was defined as uh, patients with hypertension who required at least three drugs, including a diuretic, for control of their blood pressure. And out of about 55,000 patients with known uh, atherosclerotic disease and hypertension uh, or multiple risk factors uh, for coronary disease, they found about 12 or 13 percent of patients met this definition of resistant hypertension. Um, about 5 percent were on three drugs, 5 or 6 percent were on four drugs, and 2 percent were on five drugs or more to manage their hypertension. Not that surprisingly, those with resistant hypertension versus uh, more mild hypertension had worse outcomes over the subsequent four years. And thus, I think highlighting a very important group of patients where uh, trying to find new treatments, uh, most recent of which uh, is renal nerve uh, denervation, a, a new procedure uh, that's being looked at. And so a big problem with some potential new treatments. Next up is a uh, paper in the New England Journal looking at the long-term outcomes of how to manage abdominal aortic aneurysms, endovascular repair with a stent-type device or open repair via surgery. Previous report at two years had shown a mortality advantage for the stent approach, and now at five years, the outcomes were identical for mortality. Interestingly, the early outcomes persisted uh, with benefit towards the endovascular repair at three years, uh, but then were equal at five. There were uh, six out of the 444 patients uh, developed rupture, um, and there were none in the open repair uh, patients. Now, interestingly, they also saw an age um, interaction where there was a persistent benefit at five years in younger patients, those less than age 70, and a trend towards worse outcomes with endovascular repair in those over the age of 70. And so that might have implications of how to manage patients, younger patients with an endovascular approach and older with surgery. And at the number one pick is the new ACC, AHA, um, and other uh, groups uh, guideline for management of stable ischemic heart disease. Um, it's been about 10 years since the last uh, guideline, and um, this guideline provides a nice overview of how to manage this very large group of patients. Not surprisingly, risk stratification is the starting point, and they note that a stress test is one of the best ways to do that. Then, uh, guideline-recommended medical therapy is the cornerstone of, of treatment with um, uh, aspirin, a beta blocker for those with angina, statins, control of risk factors, all recommended for patients. They noted that uh, there's a very small group of patients who, if identified with left main or severe LV dysfunction and three-vessel disease, would benefit from cabbage. But otherwise, medical therapy should be the first approach uh, and revascularization if medical therapy uh, fails. And then finally, in the follow-up management, they note that routine annual testing uh, for ischemia is not recommended, and uh, routine um, or additional testing would be recommended only if patients had a change in clinical status. So a very useful document for a big group of our patients. So for this week's Cardiology Countdown, I'm Chris Cannon. <music>